And with 2007 being the 25 year anniversary of the first ever world championship, things were going to be very interesting. And indeed, things were extremely interesting, but probably not for the reasons everyone would have liked. We'll get back to those reasons later, there's a lot I want to say on that topic. But for now, Worlds 2007! Much like Worlds 2005, the first talk of Worlds 2007 was less than a month after the previous Worlds had ended. Chris Hardwick posted on the Yahoo Speed Solving Group, asking people about their goals for 2007. Not too many people were talking about where they wanted it to be, but the few who were overwhelmingly preferred somewhere in Europe. It makes sense if you think about it. It's a world championship, so it can't be in North America all the time, and Europe had a very well-developed cubing scene. South America would eventually have a large enough community to justify holding worlds there, as would Asia, but at the time, Europe was it. I mean, imagine holding it somewhere like Australia, that would be a disaster. Anyway, in September 2006, Chris made another post on Yahoo and all but confirmed the rumours. Worlds 2007 would be held in Budapest, Hungary. A fitting place being the birthplace of the Cube and the 25th anniversary of the 1982 World Championship in Budapest. On the 12th of January 2007, this was officially confirmed. Worlds 2007 would be held over October 5th to October 7th 2007 at the Budapest Congress and World Trade Center right next to the Novotel Budapest Congress Hotel. By March 9th, registrations had officially opened, and 214 competitors from 32 countries would be signed up by the time registration closed, the largest competition in the history of the WCA at the time. Two newsletters would be sent out, including an interview with the executive manager of Rubik's Studio, Janos Kovac, as well as a competitor pack explaining what was where and preparations that needed to be made. A minor competition for the Rubik's Revolution was also announced, with a 1,000 euro cash prize. Much like 2005, there was a debate between the WCA and Seven Towns on whether or not non-Rubik's brands would be allowed. The WCA was pushing to allow them, while Seven Towns was dead against it. However, they suggested that no future competitions would have this limitation. Various misunderstandings made some people believe that the WCA was actually of the opinion that non-Rubik's brand cubes should be banned. However, on the 2nd of May 2007, Ron Van Brueckham announced the good news. Except for 3x3, non-Rubik's brand cubes would be allowed for all events. Ishin cubes would finally get a turn in the spotlight at a world championship. It's unknown if the limitation on 3x3 was ever removed, however. A couple weeks before Worlds, there were threads on the speed solving forum about who would win. A poll went up, and many messages followed, debating who would win. One thing was for sure, it would definitely be someone with a top 10 average. It didn't seem feasible that anyone else could take the crown. The question was, who? In the end, it wouldn't be any of them for first place, or even second place. Third place was won by Mitsuki Gunji with a 13.05 average. Second place was won by Andrew Kang, also with a 13.05 average, but with a slightly faster single of 10.88. The winner? Yu Nakajima. He came out of nowhere, only having been to one competition ever before, where he achieved third place, and came out on top for the second round and the final with a 12.46 average. Barely anyone knew who he was beforehand, but afterwards, he was unstoppable. Later on, he would get an 8.72 world record single twice in the same competition, as well as an 11.28 world record average. Is this the end of the world's 2007 story? Oh no. There is a lot of scandal and intrigue that has not been covered here. For this, we need to head to some different events, specifically the blind events, specifically a particular competitor in the blind events, Matyas Kuti. Kuti was a Hungarian cuber who seemed to be absolutely unstoppable in a ton of events, including blind. He came first in a couple of non-blind events at Worlds, as well as three of the blind events, three blind, four blind, and multi-blind. 
He also podiumed in several other events and broke world record after world record after world record. He seemed to be unbelievably good in all events, blind especially. Unbelievably good. So much so that some literally didn't believe it, and started poking around at some of Kuji's videos. After examining closely, they noticed various discrepancies in solves he had done. Milan Batiz made a post on the Speed Solving Forum claiming that as he had stopped solving for 30 straight seconds while the paper was under him in a particular solve, he had never had any significant break before, this was proof that he was cheating. This post was met with a lot of scepticism, and most people were on Cootie's side at this point. After significant gossip, the WCA began their own investigation. It was detailed in a report that has never been made public as Maciesz was underage at the time, so as a result, most of the evidence and information was just rumours and not actual fact. Until now, baby! Right, so that was a lot of fallout. This was the first big scandal in the Cuban community, and many people were in shock that something like this could happen. There was no precedent for Cuba being banned from competing before, and a lot of people believed the investigation could have been carried out better as a result. Quite a few people expressed feelings that three years was too long, and that it should have been a shorter ban or otherwise less severe consequences. Others were in disbelief that the cheating even took place, and were outraged at the WCA for this, claiming that the investigation was significantly biased. Although, looking at the report in hindsight, it's hard to say, honestly. Matashish's mother actually came onto the WCA forum thread, claiming violations of the UN Declaration of Human Rights. Honestly, the entire thing was a mess, and a good lesson for the WCA in how to deal with an event like this in the future. I just wanted to stop here, just for a moment, because there are a couple of things that I wanted to bring up. Um, first of all, I find it quite interesting that despite being given numerous opportunities to come clean, and then be given a lighter sentence, Matias never did. You could say this is because he really was innocent, and didn't want to make a false confession, but given the boatloads of evidence against that, it doesn't seem likely. I mean, I'm not going to speculate on why he did what he did, as only he knows and it'd be pointless. I just thought that was interesting. Uh, secondly, it's also kind of interesting that all of the big scandals in cubing these days happen in the brain-heavy events, like FMC and blind events. Again, I don't really know why this is, but I do have a pet theory, and that is they're harder to judge. With FMC, you have maybe one or two judges judging an entire room full of people, and even for the most experienced judge in the world, that's very difficult to do. And with the blind events, you usually have quite inexperienced judges, who really only have ever judged speed events before, and as a result, they might not be so up on the rules of judging a blind event. And so, as a result, it's easier to get things through. I mean, I don't really know, uh, but maybe the WCA might want to look into this, uh, especially with the recent banning of Fabio De Rose. And thirdly, I wish I didn't have to say this, but please, please don't go looking for Maciusz. I know that I couldn't really stop anyone looking for, like, Tony Fisher and complaining to him about stuff, but, like... This happened nearly... this happened over 11 years ago, actually. Yeah, over 11 years ago. I'm sure that he's grown up, he was a kid then, he's an adult now, he just wants to move on with his life, and I'm sure that if he did want to actually say why he did what he did, then he would do that on his own terms, not because anyone asked him to. So don't go searching for him, it's quite easy to do so, but don't ask him don't give, send him messages, you know, of support, of anger, or even just to ask why he did what he did. Maybe he'll come back and we'll have an interview together. I don't know what will happen, but I really don't think that it will be wise for you to go and actually try and f sit, seek him out, okay? Okay. Not long to go now, don't worry.
promise of the controversies. Worlds 2007 was considered by many to be an excellent competition. Cubing was growing at a steady pace, and there was no fear that Worlds 2009 would be hindered by any serious organisational issues. The only question was, where to have it?